In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. Let each of us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God, Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You're the Word made flesh, the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. And we pray, O oh God, hope and light of the sincere, we humbly entreat you to dispose our hearts to offer you worthy prayer and ever to extol you by dutiful proclamation of your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time, and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful about what you are to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him, but he was killed and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men, let them go. For if this activity or endeavor is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. One thing I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. One thing I see to dwell in the house of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
May our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went across to see a galley. A large crowd followed him. They saw the signs he was performing on the sick. He went up the mountain. There he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes, he saw a large crowd coming. He said to Philip, where can we get enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have even a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said, well, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now, there was a great deal of grass there. They reclined, about 5,000 in number. Jesus took the loaf, gave thanks, distributed them to all who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they gathered up the leftovers, they collected so many, they filled 12 wicker baskets from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw this sign, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew they were going to come and carry him off to make him a king, he withdrew to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. I count on my people being intelligent and seeing connections, themes that are repeated all the time. It was just two weeks ago yesterday, Jesus took bread at the Last Supper. And so we have the Eucharist. It'll be two days from now. They're walking on the road to Emmaus. You'll hear the story. And they, they don't know who it's Jesus. They don't know who this guy is. He's talking to them, explaining the scriptures but they don't recognize him. But then they sit down for dinner and he, he takes and breaks bread. And then they recognize that it was the resurrected Jesus. But only in bread, the Last Supper, the road to Emmaus. And in here today, he takes the bread. Notice how the same themes keep coming up. And they said, well, what, what, what's a couple loaves of bread for 5,000 people? Well, in Jesus' hands, it's plenty. In our hands, it'd be nothing, not a fragment, not a morsel. But when he takes the bread, miraculous things happen. They have more than they, could, more than they wanted to eat. This is God's work. I hope you listen to what Jeannie read for us in the first reading. And what are we going to do with these guys? And the wise man gets up and says, look, if this is a human endeavor, it'll die out. If it's God's work, how are you going to stop it? You can't. How are you going to fight God? You can't fight God. You're going to lose. When Jesus takes the bread, there's plenty for everybody. When we turn our lives over to him and make him the center of our lives, there's always plenty, not just plenty, plenty of bread, but plenty of mercy, love, and forgiveness when we turn our lives over to him and make him the center. Until then, we're always going to be hungry. With him, we are always full. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll offer our petitions to Almighty God. <laughs> that the church will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that all nations will prioritize care for the poor and vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who asked us to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Marion de Aurora, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they be at peace with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we beg you to hear our prayers. Through your grace, may we recognize the Eucharist as, as you, the resurrected Christ, entering our lives. We make all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings from your family, that under your protective care we may never lose what we have received, but attain gifts that are eternal. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty, our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the offering of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself to be the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exulting your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angels praise you, and we join them as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like to the dewfall, that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way with supper, and he took a chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from ever evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Keep safe, Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness. They're redeemed by the passion of your Son. We may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God bless us, our families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God.